Hey everybody, Gabe Turner here from GabeTurner.com and I just thought I'd share with you today what a day in the life of a cruise ship musician is like. And it actually would be more like a week in the life. Um, I used to play sax on a cruise ship. It was a week long cruise, so I kind of looked at my life in terms of weeks. Um, but um, just to give you an idea, because every day is a little different, but you know, uh, if you're looking into being a cruise ship musician or if you want to do it or if you've got signed on to a ship and you don't really know what it's going to be like yet, I just thought, hey, I can share that. <laughs> so hopefully this is valuable to you. Um, I would say, let's say the first day you get there, anyway, you're all settled, just assume you're settled and everything. And uh, the first day of the week, the first day of the cruise you're on, um, you're going to be doing a boat drill. And that that at least on mine. I was on the Carnival uh, Sensation and Celebration in 99 and 2000 and so who knows if things have changed but I probably not. Um, and uh, the boat drill is the thing that they do for um, all the passengers and the crew um, to practice what do you do in case of an emergency. So you've got like 2,000, 3,000 people um, they, they all need to go up the stairs and, and uh, get out to their, whatever they, they call it, the spots where they have to go to get on the boats and get on the, the, the lifeboats and stuff. So they have to bring their um, life jackets from their rooms up uh, to the deck. And of course, this is a kind of a nightmare because you've got all these people and you've got, you've got people who are like disabled, you've got people who have a hard time getting up the stairs, you know, and so you have to help these people, you have to help, all, and you just have people who are just crazy and they they might even be drunk. <laughs> so they're just people, they have to be dealt with. It's a big crowd of people, so they, they get the staff and the crew to kind of be people standing on the stairs, kind of saying, this way people, this way, you know, if they need a little help, you help them. And so you didn't know you were getting into this, did you? But um, I didn't either when I got there, so this is like a once in a week thing you have to go through. It takes like maybe an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, and so you go and you help with the, with the boat drill. So that's one thing. Um, and But basically that, that's the first day of the week of the cruise that you're on, and, um, and then you have to, like as a musician, they usually have some kind of a thing. We had something called the Captain's Cocktails, and that's where... They have, we had like two of them, so they could do a show, do a cock, it's like a, in the big showroom where they have cocktails and little hors d'oeuvres and stuff, and they, they kind of introduce the staff, like the main staff of the ship, like so you've got the captain and, and all the, the, the hotel manager and all these other people, and, um, and so they, they have like, you know, there are like 20 or so people, they introduce them all and they, and the band is there and we play them on like the Tonight Show band kind of and do these little tunes and stuff. And we play music while people are having their, their hors d'oeuvres and stuff. And so that's kind of that. So that was, that's kind of the first day. And then you probably have some kind of a show at night, um, like a variety show. Three days a week, we had a variety show. We had a comedian, a juggler, a magician, um, something. Um, something like that and usually have like two two entertainers per show so like we had a com we 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 play a song a big song to play on you know like the tonight show band or something we play on the intro song um entertainer comes on you know and then the announcer comes out and introduces the next guy and he comes out and it's like an hour or so and you're done and you you do i think we did two of those um per night and so it's all a, a fate, foggy memory now, but um, yeah, so you do that. Those are the easy shows, um, the variety shows, because you're just playing and then you're sitting while, while the guy is doing his performing and then you play another song and then you sit. So at these shows you become very familiar with. You memorize all the jokes and everything. Hopefully you get some good entertainers. Some of them are not as good as others. So that's the other thing. And then two days a week we had um, the Vegas style production shows where you've got the big you know oh they get in like like 20 dancing girls and guys and and singers and everything and we back it up and 
So that was kind of what we did. And those are bigger productions. A little more stressful in the beginning because you don't really know what's going on and, and you're trying to figure it out. But you learn it and after a while it just is like nothing and you've done it a million times and no big deal. So, um, but yeah, it really, I mean, you wake up at like, I don't know, usually I would wake up around 10 or 11, or maybe even later because I would just stay up late because <laughs> we would play and then everybody would hang out. And But um, so we would play, I wake up and um, I did, I'd usually miss breakfast and I'd have to go to eat lunch for breakfast. And um, and then you, some. I think we had a one rehearsal a week maybe. And so you have to be that, be to that. Really, it's not a lot um, as a musician. You just need to pull your weight when you're playing, you know. Um, so you need to practice. And um, where are you going to practice? Well, there's not a lot of options, uh, which is kind of annoying. I know some guys would get, like trumpet players, they have this thing. It's like a mute to go in your horn that, I mean, trumpet players will know about this, but like it cuts out most of the sound and you have headphones that the sound goes into the headphones and you can play. It's not as not as satisfying as without it, but you can practice. And there is another thing for sax players. There's like a bag you can put around your horn um, to muffle the sound. And I tried them before and it's just like, well, this stinks, you know. But if you have to practice, that is an option. I mean, of course you have to practice. But um, I would go to the rope deck. It's this deck that no passenger is allowed to go to. It's kind of the last deck on the bottom of the boat before you have to go under, you know, and there's no open air. So this was open air. Um, there'd be tons of ropes, and I would sit on the ropes and I'd rig up my music and I'd put it on the side. I'd be like playing, like looking at it. It's, it's really awkward. But usually I would just play without music or something and I would just do my long tones and scales and stuff. and. Um, that would be a way to do it. A lot of times there's guys out there chatting or or sleeping on the ropes and stuff and it's like, oh gosh, you know, I don't want to annoy them. Or But usually it, it worked out okay. Um, you can also go to the dressing rooms behind the stage or on the side of the stage. Those are kind of a toss up. It's just, bec you know, you're living with a lot of people and the staff, there's like a lot of staff too. And, and so those are the people that you're you're mainly interacting with. So you kind of learn your where where your boundaries are and where you can do some certain things and where you can't do other things at certain times of the day or certain times of the week. So it's kind of annoying. I'm an introvert, and you know it was hard. It's hard for introverts, extreme introverts like me. And so I I don't know what to tell you. It's it was that was the toughest thing for me is not being able to get alone in terms of practicing and then just being by myself because I wanted to read a book and not be bothered or not be around other people. That's how I recharge. So I found one room, you know, you just go exploring and poke around and see if you can find anywhere to get away. There might be in a closet somewhere or something, you know, you just you do what you got to do and um it is hard to get away from people. So anyway, um a lot of times those practice situations can be pretty tough because y your sound carries and you're gonna bother somebody you know the I remember one of them those dressing one of the dressing rooms was below the captain's quarters where he was I don't know what it was but it was some area where he was in his office or something and he did not like us doing that so of course you have to obey what he says but um, anyway it's kinda tough so that's the I mean if there may be other ways to do it that I don't know about, but practicing is important for a musician, and that was that was kind of one of the main things I wanted to do um, because you've got a lot of time on your hands. Um, so plan to use your time wisely. That will be a. It was a tough thing for me because I got kind of depressed <laughs> on the ship because of a lot of different reasons. It feels like you're well, you're living at your job all the time, and you can't get away from. You can't get away from it on sea days. So, like for us, we have like three sea days a week, where that means you're trapped on the ship. And uh, so you feel the pressure. It, for me, it closed in on me. I was, I didn't notice my other the other guys in the band dealing with it as much as me. I, I don't know. I was kind of a unique case. Um, but yeah, I, I read a lot of books. I that was the one thing that was easy for me to say. Okay, I got to redeem this time somehow. So I got some Russian novels, you know, and uh, big, thick, 
classics and I, I read a bunch of those and and you know redeem the time make make use of this time and if you want to learn something learn a language or whatever you've got time you know of course you're there as a musician so you can really practice your horn practice your your instrument your your theory whatever bring some books and plan to, to use your time wisely don't waste it away it's it's so easy I saw so many people just frittering away their time um, and anyway but uh, Another thing is the crew bar. That is that is like the only place that people hang out on the ship, the crew. Um, and so drinks are cheap, everything. I don't drink, so it was kind of like, oh, great. <laughs> but uh, that's where everybody goes to hang out. I would still go there sometimes, but a lot of people end up, some people end up having drinking problems um, because the drinks are cheap and there's not a lot of other things to do. and and. You know, they have their money, they got paid in cash. <laughs> uh, you do get paid in cash. Um, so, yeah, and, and you're going to all these tourist trap, you know, cruise ports where there's a lot of, you know, it's it's a lot of party partying and stuff. So that that's just kind of the thing. So you got to be aware of that, you know, know where to draw the line, you know, and a lot, don't waste your money, you know. You're there to make some money, get some experience as a musician. Um, be Just be wise, you know. Um, Da, 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 da. Eating, eating is pretty good um, for for a cruise uh, uh, for the staff. Um, the staff are the people like the hairdressers, the shop, the people that work in the shops, the the childcare people, the musicians, the dancers, the singers, performers. And there's you know on my ship I don't know there's probably like a hundred, two hundred people of those in that category. Maybe not that much, but we would eat in the staff mess which is nicer. That's where the people who are training to be waiters and cooks for the upstairs big dining room where they have like really nice meals and stuff, that's where they're practicing to to get advanced up to that level. So you are getting to eat some pretty nice food and, um, and they wait on you. You have to tip them uh, or it's you should tip them. Um, but you'll get to know the waiters and it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. You know, they, they fill up your glass and you know, they deliver your food to you. Of course, you'll have to know that you do, at least in my experience, you eat the same thing. Every Monday, there's like three choices. Every Tuesday, there's three choices or two choices. And that's all you get. And it's the same thing every week for months. So it, it, it feels like deja vu a lot of time. You look down at your your plate and you're like, what the heck? I, I thought I was just ate this the other day, you know. And anyway you know it's not the end of the world but it does do a, a mind job on you um, so that's kind of the, the week a day in the life of a cruise musician I may have left some things out but it gives you a little idea of what it's like and um, I didn't talk about uh, the port days obviously you go to the ports and you want to get off the ship as soon as possible that was my thing I was like I am there. It's 7 a.m., 7 6 a.m., that's when we pull into the port. That's when I'm standing at the door waiting to get out because I want to go enjoy my freedom. That was the time when you got some freedom. You know, you're not closed into the ship and you're not, you know, living next door to your boss <laughs> and all that stuff. So you, you get to get out. And, I mean, I walked my feet down. I mean, I I walked more than I'd ever walked in my life, I think. I just, I just loved just to get out and walk. And I walked all over New Orleans, all over Cozumel, um, especially, and, and man, I, I just loved it. So anyway, there are some good things, there are some not so great things. I guess that's with everything in life, but uh, that's the day in the life of a cruise cruise musician. Um, good luck on your, your pursuits there, and if you wanna check out my blog post on this, go to the link below, and I'll catch you later, bye.